if you start with a pre-existing idea of what you're about to watch, you will see what it is you think you're going to see. I am giving you the United States. Whoa. Let me love you, let me love you, let me love you, let me love you to death and kiss you to life. You have become bread for the eater. And you've shown yourself. You died. But now you stand very tall in my sight, so you've won. There but you she, go. She replaced Jesus. We're done. I'm not buying into it. I'm gonna step back a little bit and be a little bit skeptical and actually think about what she says. <laughs> 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 Hi everybody, welcome to Hit the Bar. Hit the Bar. <laughs> we are so excited to be making this video tonight. Yeah. Woo! It's gonna be great, isn't it, honey? <laughs> I think Ginger is expressing my feeling. We've got our friends Kenneth Copeland and Heidi Baker in a painfully long video. Which I watched a couple of times and took notes, took notes, and then watched a documentary that just came out about her ministry. Because I honestly, outside of, I was just telling this to him, of him or Chris Roseborough talking about Heidi Baker and showing all these things, you know, videos, I've never really looked into her ministry. And I've never, you know, watched any of her videos or read anything about her. So this was um, a little more in depth for me. So, yeah. So, um, by the way, we got Kiko and Ginger. Ginger's got cancer. Yep. And she's behaving fine, but she's got stuff Tumors. she's got to have yeah. removed. And then we got to find out what level it is and to see what the next step is. We don't know. So we appreciate your prayers and thoughts. Thank you. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, shout out to all of our campuses all over the world. Hey, how you doing? Good to have you here tonight. It's Memorial Day weekend. Right? Memorial Day. Yep. Weekend. Today's Saturday. Sunday. <coughs> it's Sunday, actually. It's Sunday. Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday. Yep. I was close. I was just one day off. Quit jumping all over me. Yeah. Thank you to all of our servicemen all over the... Thank you. And women have served our country and the military and all that stuff. That's really great. And we're, we're going to really have to gird up our loins for this one because it's really long, number one. And it takes a while to get anywhere. And um, she was looking at this video that somebody else posted while I took the original video, which had different timestamps. So we're going to use the uh, version on the Internet. And I can only speed it up in... Um, the increments that YouTube gives us. So I think I'm going to try to speed it up in the 1.25 because mm -hmm. they don't change the voices. It just goes a little faster because she takes a long time sometimes. Yeah, she does. Yeah. So, hey, if you haven't watched our show before, this has hit the bar. What does that mean, honey? <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for this. Uh, we watch a sermon. Thusly. Sermon. Sermon. <laughs> And when we object to what is being presented, we hit the space bar on the computer, we stop it, and then we compare it to scripture and see, you know, what is disturbing about it. Or what's just a little bit off. Right. It may not be totally bad. It may be just slightly bad. So there's a lot of stuff that people say. And one of the things about sermons that's, well, I, I figured this out when I was on a worship team years ago that when I was at a church where there was two services, sometimes I would hear the sermon twice. And I would hear so many things the second time. Sometimes they changed it, but other times I would I would actually go, oh, I didn't, I didn't really notice that before. And if you only listen to a sermon one time, especially if the sermon or the person giving the sermon is really good at kind of drawing you in and kind of carrying you through this emotional process so that you're just following along and you're just tracking and you're just agreeing, it's really deceptive at times. It's really manipulative. It at can times. be very easy to say, "Well, I know what they meant." Yes, exactly. I know what they meant. It sounds off, but no, they couldn't have meant that. They couldn't have meant that. No. So that's why we interrupt them. We take our time, and these videos are the long-form videos. I've had people say, "Oh, you're just taking stuff out of context." I'm like, "Well, they said what they said." <laughs> right. They, they, you know, I, this, 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 and this, and this. Now, the words that came before and the words that came after it aren't really relevant in some cases. Right. But for the sake of these videos, because right. they are sermon reviews, mm -hmm. 
mostly we've done a few things that are not quite sermons, but mostly th these are sermon reviews. And by the way, if you haven't watched Chris Roseboro on Fighting for the Faith, we're basically stealing his stuff completely. Yeah. In a, in a good way. He's a friend and he's done a lot of good for us in understanding how to interpret. And her. he does an amazing job yeah. teaching. And he, he had a show on a, a podcast called Fighting for the Faith, which is now a YouTube video. And so if you haven't watched him yet, I know a lot of you have, but if you haven't, please avail yourself of his content because it's super, super good. Couple of yes, things. Yes, you over there. Couple of things about this that we were a little... <laughs> what is this? At odds with struggling. We're sawing logs. <laughs> struggling with. <laughs> so... We never struggle. We have a happy marriage. <laughs> Don't we, funny? <laughs> Yes, it's very this and very that, but it's all good because God is right there. <laughs> I love my wife. He makes me laugh. Anyway, so, so you know, as we discussed before, we had issues with trying to get... <laughs> this stupid screen wouldn't even turn on. Yeah. And it, it all of a sudden turned on. After we prayed. Yes, thank you, God. Thank you, God. So... By the way, these are good for us to eat too, right? <laughs> they're cucumbers and carrots. I, I mean, think they're so. not like they weren't in the dog's dish or anything. Yeah, I put, oh. I put each one of them in their mouths so that, no, of course it's not. It's fine. You know, we're taking too long with this. We should get started. Would you stop telling me what to do? That's my job. No, it's not. The husband's job is to tell the wife Whatever. what to do. Whatever. Thank you, you Marcus, for the candy. Marcus, thank you, Marcus. From Brazil. Well, he's not from Brazil. But the candy is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Marcus is a wonderful young man in town here who. Yeah. It was one of those situations where, you know, God is working outside of all of us, not watching the show, this show or any show, but just looking for the truth. Young man who just turned he, he was 21. Not, he was watching some, some shows. Of ours? Not no, before he came no. on. Right, not before he came on. Not before he went to our church. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yes. And so um, now mm. he wants to look to, to go into ministry, which is fantastic. Anyway, what I like about that is that God is working and working. And things Well, people just show up in church. Right, which is fantastic because it just is so um reassuring and very um an undergirding or kind of saying, Yes, God is working. We're praying and sometimes we don't see things, but God's working. And it's neat to I see it's like, Hey, how did how did that happen? I don't know. The guy just showed up. Yeah. Well, well, that was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So, okay. I might have to move this every now and then because we've got a sprawler. <laughs> yeah. And and what I'm trying to say is that there's several things about her ministry that confused me and made, you know, made me try to figure her out more. And one is that, yes, she's from California, rich family, decided to become a charismatic Christian, got married to a man whose parents were um, missionaries. I don't think they were just ministers, but missionaries. She became a missionary, went to a third world country, and talks about all of these um, things that she lays down for the cross. You know, she lives in this country that most people don't... Actually, is one of the most... Mozambique. Yeah, poorest countries in the world, puts her life at risk to give food and shelter and help the people who are homeless and orphans and all that good stuff. So we had Daryl and Marge over a couple of weeks ago and talking about this. And I, Daryl is our scholar, our virtual scholar. Um, but anyway, what I really liked what he said was, you know, here it is. She's doing what... Like James talks about, you know, um, feeding, taking care of the widows and orphans. And James talks about that being true religion. And that can confuse some people. Because it's like, while well, she professes Jesus. She has given up her life to serve, you know, the people who are so um, more desperate in a situation to give to them and to serve them. But... It's interesting because at the very end of this whole program, you see where truly um, the teaching of I don't know, the, um, the doctrine is, and it's very bad. It's it's not 
the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we can be very caught up in the deeds. Yeah, that's a really good point. In fact, you know, the book of James is one of those books that has caused a lot of controversy because it's really quite different in some ways from other books in the New Testament. And so one of the principles of good Bible interpretation is to take the unclear and view it through the lens of the more clear. That's not the exact right way to say it, but so... Um, I'm but just, scripture interprets scripture. Well, but the, the more, even even more than that is okay. that if you've got 10 verses that say one thing and then one verse that says something that seems opposed to those 10, you, you, you put more weight on the 10 verses that say the one thing than the one verse that seems to conflict. Okay. Yeah. And that's not even the best way of putting it. By the way, if you haven't watched the video I made with Daryl, please do. Um, I'm really happy with the comments. And uh, we will be doing more of those. I, I even have another one in my computer ready to go. I just got to put it together. But, you know, we do these kind of videos where we, it's a little more um, uh, kind of grabbing people's attention with, mm -hmm. with you know, what's, what's kind of uh, sensational. And this isn't a sensational thing, the fact that Heidi Baker was finally preaching side by side with Kenneth Copeland. However, what he says is very sensational. And you know what? Honestly, if you want to get a, a lot of views on YouTube, just put Kenneth Copeland on your thumbnail and say something about Kenneth Copeland. And <laughs> I mean, it's just true. I, on my channel, my Kenneth Copeland videos are the ones that have the most views. They're not necessarily my best videos, although the one with the wheelchair, I think, was really good. It, yeah. it, but it, it's been viewed over a million times. Um, but like at the end of James, where do conflicts, and this is uh, James chapter 4, where do conflicts and quarrels among you come from? Don't they come from your cravings for pleasure, which are at war in the parts of your body? You want something, but do not get it. So you murder. You desire something, but cannot obtain it. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask, and yet you do not receive because you ask wrongly, so that you may spend it on what gives you pleasure. Adulterers, don't you know that friendship with the world means hostility toward God? So whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. This idea of being a friend of the world, I think you could make a really good case that there's a part of Kenneth Copeland that's very friendly with the world, with his jets and his opulence when and his wealth. When he talks about, I, want to I be was rich. very interested in being, being very, very rich. rich. Yeah. <laughs> right. And Abraham became very rich. Very rich. I was very interested in very rich. Yeah, that's the part of James that I, I don't think um, they would want to point out too much. Or if they did, they would change it to say, well, yeah, I've got all those riches, but I also give money away and I support ministries. Which, well, they'll which, talk about how the apostles were very rich. Yeah, that's another thing that's See, crazy. The apostles are very rich, so of course I want to be rich. Except that there is no passage in the Bible that says anything close to that. Right. Um, hang on, though. She wants to eat whatever you're... She wants a lot of stuff. She has been really, really rambunctious. We put her on some you know, fish oil and glucosamine a while ago. If anyone, she's all excited. If anyone considers himself to be religious but deceives his own heart because he does not bridle his tongue, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled in the sight of God the Father is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Now, if you took that one verse mm -hmm. and you just made that the primary verse over all other verses, you would say that, well, what is religion? It's, it's taking care of orphans and widows in their affliction. That's one category. And the mm -hmm. second category would be to keep yourself unstained by the world. Mm -hmm. So that's where you could justify being something like a, a monk, mm -hmm. you know, living in a monastery where you're completely isolated from the world and you're... Um, your only thing, you know, you're involved in is, is you're, you're not living with any kind of worldly anything. You know, you just dress in the same robe every day. You sleep on a really crummy little bed and you sleep in this unadorned room. And whatever money comes into the monastery, you give it to the poor. That would be a way that you could say, I'm literally doing what the Bible says. But this is James kind of summarizing for this particular letter. And he's, if you look at the context of it, he's... He's talking about these people who are too interested in things of this world and they're getting off focus. So this isn't a global statement that can 
you kind of go over all the other things in the Bible. And it really applies to somebody like Heidi Baker, because I think the temptation is, it's really strong to say, well, gosh, how could we dare criticize what she teaches right. when she does these nice things? These right. really important re things that a lot of people don't do, a lot of Christians don't do. Well, a lot of Christians would say, gosh, I feel bad. You know, I, I wish I was more like her. I wish I was going out and helping the poor and giving everything up. And right. There is an element where it's possible that you could be convicted by God that you really are being selfish and you really do need to do more to help people. And it also is possible that you don't understand law and gospel. And what you does think that mean, Steve? law and gospel is a category of understanding uh, Bible passages that are <clears throat> primarily about not only teaching us what we should do, but convicting us so that we see our need for a savior. That's law. The law is sometimes used to instruct us for sure. You know, how do you live? Well, the law teaches us how we should live. But even more so, the law condemns us. And when it condemns us, we go the to law the, meaning. the law meaning that just as the simplest form would be the Ten Commandments. Right. What, what does God want you to do with your life? Well, the Ten Commandments is that nice little category where you want to know what God's will is. Just look at the Ten Commandments. Okay. You know, he's not going to tell you exactly who to marry, what car to drive, what college to go to, what bowl of cereal. I had Lucky Charms, by the way. I haven't had Lucky Charms in a long time. Frosted old cereal with sweet surprises. And I'm, uh, I, I am, love Lucky Charms. I am really surprised that the percentage of marshmallows has gone up. Pink hearts, yellow moons, orange stars, green clovers. Substantially. It's gone up? Yes. Well, then I got to start eating it. Uh, there, there's Get the weed away. I would say it's 50-50, marshmallows versus good. the actual no, okay. food. It's good to know. Frosted <laughs> Lucky Charms. They're magically delicious. Oh, now I just completely lost my train yeah. of thought. Bunny trails, we do that What too were we talking about? Program. We're talking about... Um, Oh, law and gospel. Yes. Gospel is, hey, yeah, you're right. You are guilty of not following God's law completely. You are guilty of being selfish or, or whatever. That's why you go to church to hear the gospel proclaimed yet again and to receive it. And so to receive the gospel would mean that you're going, oh, that's right. That's why, that's why we need a Savior. That's why Jesus came. He died on the cross so that I could have my sins forgiven and I could be reminded of that over and over and over again. So... Um, this verse is law, and it's not that it's bad. It's, it's true that we should be doing these things. We should be concerned about the poor. We should be concerned about orphans. And, you know, uh, any church that's, a, you know, a real church, that's part of what their budget goes towards. And we were talking, too, you and I, when we were going through um, our reading in Acts about what who widows were and yeah. what money from the church has to go. But really, before that, it is up to the family to take care of their family. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, that's just kind of a side line. So we're going to listen to her. Ugh. And she's very, very mystical. And uh, if you haven't watched the thing that I did, the uh, the video with, with Daryl, we did get into that. And we've talked about it here too. But mysticism mm -hmm. is, is just the idea that you're primarily hearing from God internally. You're not hearing from God through the word. You're hearing God internally. And he's giving you specific messages. God and, told me this. God yes. told me that. And and the whole purpose of your Christian life, you maybe got saved or born again that one time a long time ago, and that's that's nice and all. But right now, it's about this personal, intimate relationship you have, and you got to continue to do stuff to muster that up and to make it happen. And when you hear people like Heidi Baker, especially as a man, I'm like, I, I don't get this. This thing I'm supposed to be doing, I, I don't get it. <laughs> She's anxious to get down, sorry. So let's go to where you got somewhere around here when she first joins in. Uh, they're doing their singing. Okay. So I was going to try to change the speed. This is Keep the talking. first time that she was invited to Kenneth Copeland's church. And so she worships this man, and she'll tell you about that later. Um, hey, and, I, 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 look at that face you're making. That's, <laughs> there, there. He's interrupting me. Go for it. I think what we should do, and I know we're just, we're making this up, people. Let's go to the Kenneth Copeland part and get that out of the way. <laughs> Let's get out of the way. I do it. I told him. Okay. So that is at 2 hours, 36 minutes, 
in 35 seconds. There we go. There we go. And there's his son-in-law. Yep. For the word of the Lord. Oh boy. Here we has go. Has come to me saying, faithful. Faithful in little. Faithful with more. Faithfulness in my eyes. In many ways greater than sacrifice. So just, just to be perfectly clear, Kenneth Copeland is not talking as Kenneth Copeland. No, he's now God. He's, he's now channeling God. That's at the word, tra yeah, channeling. And transmitting. If if you are a guest speaker in this environment and somebody's prophesying, speaking prophetically, you'll never hear him say, you know, I, the Lord, have noticed these sins in your life. That's a different prophet. <laughs> it's always... You know, hey, you came to my church. I'm going to just puff you up. I'm going to build you up. And then, you know, when I go to your church, you're going to do the same thing for me. You've been faithful to go where other people were afraid to walk. But Sarah counted me faithful and I gave her her dream. I gave her the child of her dream. Sarah counted me faithful. Yeah, I, I'm already lost. You, you know, this is another giant category. If you're watching our show for the first time, thank you. That was the longest intro we've ever done. He might chop it up and make it smaller <laughs> because it is. But this is so unchrist centered. Yeah. She says, oh, I love Jesus. And That's the whole two hours. Of... But, but it's her talking about her love for Jesus. Yeah. Why do you love Jesus? What did he do? It's not really clear in the, in the in the parts that I listened to, and we'll we'll go into that more. But this is a Heidi Baker focused sermon, and if you really were a pastor who cared about exalting Jesus, you would be talking about him. And you wouldn't want anything to be put upon yourself. Yes, but look at what is the focus here? Who's being exalted? Right. <laughs> Abraham counted me faithful, and because of the blood covenant between the two of us, he was me. fully persuaded that I was able to do what I promised. <laughs> faithful as a servant, faithful as a child. Then as you grew up and matured as a believer and walked faithful in places, now I have given you favor. <laughs> I have given you and Roland favor in places where people hated you and wanted to kill you, and I'm changing their minds and changing their hearts. You've been faithful with my unwanted children, and now there are many will come to you who are not destitute, but they'll fall on their face before me because of your faithfulness, and you've walked with me, me these many years. So all these great things are going to happen. God's finally going to do stuff in the world that he has never done before because of who? Heidi Baker. Because of Heidi Baker. Yep. Because of how faithful she is. Right. Because of it, I have added years to your life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and the favor my favor, my grace, my goodness is falling in the hearts of men and women in this country, in the United States, where so few know of you and Roland. I am giving you the United States. I am giving you this place and opening it up to you. We're not just done with the United States here. And you'll go back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> then we'll come Canada. <laughs> Canada, so Canada. Gets you Canada will go too. to the far north. No, Dr. that's my, my brother, job, Bob. Coo -coo 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 -coo. You will go to the Inuits. You will go to those places where the suicide rate is so high <laughs> because of the darkness half of the year. <laughs> <laughs> then they will hear of you in Peru and Venezuela. Oh, now I guess she gets Peru and Venezuela. The southern part of the earth. She's going to be exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and rejoicing in heaven will be great. Is immense. Because of what she there are her. people that you have never met yeah. that are in heaven with me now, and now because he's tell you. of the words that you and Roland have preached, taught, and people you've cared for. There. <laughs> she's she's going to slump to the floor too, isn't she? Yes, she will. She's like uh, Mary Tyler Moore when she took the the pills by accident. I dropped my spoonie. I'll get it. No, no, it's all right. And she slid down the chair. Oh yeah. That's what she's gonna do for okay, me. She's yeah, already that's, that's she's got her face planted on the plexiglass. Yeah. Only only Mary Tyler Tyler Moore was a little bit more entertaining. <laughs> oh, this is painful. Yeah, it this is. is horrible. How's the uh, weather? Good down here, son. Oh, fine, fine, Dad. There was a young child. There was a a young woman that heard you. You never met her. Either one of them. The young child grew up and now has a family. And her baby died and is with me today because of you, baby. I have this at higher speed. <laughs> This is at 1.25. Wow, okay. Older woman was murdered. But she's with me. Have you not understood, and has it, has, it, has it never occurred to you that a baker is one who prepares bread? Wow. And the night that I was betrayed, I took bread. Here we go. Wait for it. And it's I coming. broke it. And I said, this is my body broken for you. Eat it. You have become bread for the eater. And you've sown yourself. You died. But now you stand very tall in my sight, saith the Lord. There so you she, go. She replaced Jesus. We're done. Isn't that nice? She replaced the Lord but Jesus she, Christ. She, she lives in a third world country. She helps the poor people. Can't be that bad. And she feeds people. And she loves Kenneth Copeland. And she... The worst heretic on planet Earth. And he just said that she is the savior. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't say it, but he implied it very clearly. Oh, very clearly. Yeah. yeah. How, how would I you mean, make... I mean, if I were to say to you, okay... You're the bread. You're the bread. Yeah. People are being fed on you. You are the one. You know what? I got to hear that again. Yeah. That was That was amazing. Oh, come on. You've heard this before. I actually don't remember what part I listened to and which part yeah, I didn't. This is bad. This is bad. And I broke it. Hold on. Hold on. We got to go back a little further. Back it up. A young woman oh, I went too far. that heard you. You never met He's getting sick of eating over Either here. One of them. <laughs> she just wants more. The young child grew up and now has a family. Okay, good. Yeah, that's great. All because of you. We get it. Of you, Heidi. Oh, Heidi. Heard to you that a baker is one who prepares bread. There it is. And the night that I was betrayed, I took bread. Normally when you think of God talking in that tone of voice, like scolding somebody, trying to correct them, it would be because of somebody's sin, which we all have. He was. He's not scolding her. He's, well, he, he's edifying has it, her. Has it ever occurred to you? He's basically saying, do you know how great you are? Uh, you don't even realize how great you are. Have you noticed that? That's the tone of voice. Okay. Normally, if you imagine God, and, and I'm not saying he does do this. Uh, he does it through his word. When we read about things that we should be doing and we're convicted, that's that's actually a, a, the we're role We're safe of, in the word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the law convicting us. Mm -hmm. This is God saying, do you understand how great you are? Because I don't think you do. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> and I broke it. And I said, this is my body broken for you. Eat it. 
you have become bread for the eater. <laughs> I, I'm really struggling with why he would even say that. You have become bread for the eater. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, how, how could you possibly... I know people do this all the time. I know what he meant. I don't know what you could possibly mean by that, except saying either. that you've now replaced Jesus with Heidi Baker. Right. I'm I'm sure there's other, because I know this This is like three months ago. By the way, for people who get mad at us because you should have done this right away, this, you know what? I'm not going to do that with our channel. No. Occasionally, I might find something and, and put it up right away because I'm on top of it. But most of the time, people who make short videos who kind of just grab it and, you know. Grab it and go. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to compete with. Grab it and blab it. <laughs> with all the channels Grab it that do and that. Blab it. Can you believe this just happened? I, Grab you know, it and blab it. I might do that occasionally, but that's not really the focus of this no. channel. We want this to be more of a teaching channel so you can really learn stuff. <clears throat> and then you don't need to see these kinds of videos right. anymore. That's what we hope for. Anyway, I don't understand why you would say that, except that you're channeling Satan himself. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you've shown yourself. You've shown, shown yourself. yourself. <laughs> you died. You died. But now you stand very tall but in now his sight, saith the Lord. Stands very tall in his sight, saith the Lord. Wait a minute, there's more. He's, he's, he's waiting. So rejoice. So rejoice in, in what? In Jesus? Again, I say rejoice. No, in what she can do. For a king well, needs a queen. <laughs> oh, that's right. I remember that. And in my sight, yeah. You are my queen. <laughs> you are my queen. Okay. 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 So right there. <laughs> Whoops. Now he's trying to double back, I'm thinking, in his head because of the next phrase that he puts in there. Because that's so on many levels wrong. Well, the last thing he said about her oh, replacing so Jesus. Many, I mean, this is just <laughs> going down this thing, this landslide. How bad can we get? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's more. <laughs> Oh, and the husband. And Roland Baker. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> Gotta remember about Roland. He's my king. He's a king in my sight. For the prep. So that doesn't make any sense because he said, You are my queen. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Um, and then he's almost like, This doesn't sound right. So I gotta throw in Roland. It sounds like he watched the Michael Todd uh, Easter production <laughs> with the king, the queen, the prince. Is Who's the daughter? Who's the Who represents Satan? Yeah, who's the. I don't know. I don't know. Who's the queen? Precious ones, the unwanted ones. Here we go. Are in my head. There she goes. <laughs> you okay? Stay right here. And I've shown you in the low places, but you've grown up, not chaff, but wheat for the bread. And now I'll show you in the high places. I'll show you there in will the high be people places? That will hear of your story. In palaces, people of great wealth will hear your story. Does this Not Jesus' story, but her story. Does this sound like God talking, the God of the Bible, or does this sound like a cult? Yeah. Yeah, a cult. Thank you. That's yes. a, that's a completely wrong, word. completely not of a new gospel, which and they're a different gospel, break. and but, they'll come. But different. Yes, not yes. new. A different gospel. Different gospel. Different God. Different. A different and new would be the same thing. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Whatever. Me. We're dragging this out as nothing as it is. <laughs> this ministry will be known uh. from the ski slopes of the world. From the ski slopes of the world. <laughs> what? <laughs> Further into the jungles. I know, I can't be bothered with that. I, I have no time for that sort of nonsense. <laughs> for you see, my angels have been working towards this for a long time. Wow. <laughs> and the angels that I have assigned to you, oh, if you only knew how many times they saved your life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> There he goes. How am I doing, honey? You're good. Not as good as her, though. <laughs> now yeah. stand up on your feet. We got to get a plexiglass table to make this really Yeah. Good. Stand Raise your now. hands and begin to rejoice. Yeah. Rejoice! In what? In all the know. great things that she's going to do from the ski slopes down to the jungles? Yeah. What is it? Um. Da -da 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 Africa. 
Mm. <laughs> the song from the 80s. Toro? Yeah. Is there something about ski slopes in the no, song from Toto? No, but the Toto? jungle of Africa. Oh. Africa. And she's supposed to be in the, in the jungle. That's a great song. Yeah, it's a, but not worth of this. So, I don't know if this is whatever, yeah. but I'm going to say it. Because it's our show we can do it. I don't see any tears. I hear her going, ha, 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 Oh, yeah, we've done this before. We've looked at her. It's like, okay. Yeah. Again, I say rejoice. I um, I honestly don't know what's going on with this woman. I really yeah. don't. I really don't. And I know it seems like we're being overly harsh. And other people have other channels where they're probably, you know, saying similar things, but with a completely different style than right. us. And I, I really mean that when I say I don't know what's going on right. with her. Neither do I. But I have watched her for hours. I know. For years. Yeah. And for I, years and hours. One of the right? things... You know, like, <clears throat> if you start with a pre-existing idea of what you're about to watch, you will see what it is you think you're going to see. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, mm -hmm. that's confirmation bias. Oh, I know she's a great woman of God. Why? Because that's what I know. And then you'll see that uh, everything she does, she'll see it through that idea, and you won't, you won't be even open to the possibility that maybe there's something else going on here. Maybe she's got some deception in her own life that, you know, she's sincere, but she's, she's you know, misled. And Scripture or, warns us of that. Yes, we all have that issue to be concerned right. about. I see her, and I've watched these sorts of videos where I'm, I'm like, she's an actress. I see an actress on stage giving a performance. Now, does she believe what she's saying? Maybe, or maybe some of it? I don't know. Maybe she believes all of it, but what I see is a performer putting on a performance. Now, maybe she sincerely is doing that because she thinks that's what God wants her to do, and yeah. that's that's who she is. She has a background, I guess, if I remember right, in ballet and theater and stuff. Yes, you know, she does. And, and, and same with Kenneth Copeland. He was actually a really good singer. He was actually a professional singer and to some extent. Have, didn't he have his own movie recently? <laughs> yeah, he, he does these really bad acting things. I, don't, I shouldn't say really bad. It's just no. corny. It's over corny. the top. Corny, yeah, it's over the top. He's 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 yes. very very theatrical, and so there's a there's a good healthy mm -hmm. way to look at that as Christians and to say what part of this is them just putting on a performance, whether it's sincere or not is not the question. Is this yeah what they're saying true, and are we being swayed by the ability to perform and the ability to put on a Kind of a show, really. And the other thing I think, which we discussed, is they could do all these things that are good for the world and are known for all of these good works and deeds, but what do they teach? Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, was one of my problems kind of going through all of this. Is like, but look at all of the, you know, good things that they've done. Look at all the people they've fed. Look at all the orphans that they actually sponsor. Yes. A really good real world example for us was we were going to a prophet. Right. And we were getting words from him. And um, we were kind of losing like interest. A Christian psychic. Exactly like a Christian right. psychic. <clears throat> and it's at a certain point he started doing more good deeds and starting his own orphanage and, and orphanages. Now. Yeah, and yeah. yeah, and so we were like, Oh, he must be okay. Right. Well, that was, I think, something he saw other people doing, and for whatever reason, he decided maybe it was sincere, maybe it was half sincere, half manipulative. I don't know. But whatever the case, we, at that point in our lives, were much less likely to really compare what he said to the Bible and to be skeptical about his teaching because, why? Because his teaching was good? Because we were actually being good Bereans? No, not at all. No. We were being swayed by the fact that he was doing these good deeds. And he said some things that, you know... You kind of wanted to go, I don't know if I agree with that, but... No, no. In his prophetic word over me, there are things that's oh, like, yeah. oh, gosh, who would know that? Yeah, I mean, God he, would have known that. must be from God, right. Yeah, and it was not. not. So, is there anything more we need to watch from this part, or is it just more clapping and cheering? And Hang on. Um, a king needs a queen. Yeah, we got you that. You are my queen. We got that, and that's it. That was like the highlight of how bad this the, got. The low light. What happens right here? <laughs> the low light. <laughs> Have you never understood oh. that my covenant son Abraham saw Isaac raised up in a figure and he offered his only begotten son 
because I knew the day would come when my only begotten son would be offered. Thank you, Jesus. But I saw him raised in a fever. Oh. <laughs> and I just see waves. You, you, you come from a place that's... Waves. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of heat there. And you look off in the distance and the heat waves. Mm. And, and I see it. This little heat wave. Oh. All around you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. And I say Roland. Oh yeah, bring big hat. Bring the bring the husband in. We forgot him for a while. Oh. Howdy, ma'am. <laughs> now you got your horse, I didn't get mine. <laughs> You can ride mine. I'll ride you. <laughs> He'll talk about his own story about a horse now. I'd go to my grandfather's farm and a boy that had one of the most beautiful paint horses and I rode. Do you, do you want to want to skip and go back now to what she did and what she said? Do we even need to do that? How many minutes are we into the show? I mean, it's our show. You watch this. You took all these notes. We got to we got to talk. Why you don't know you... what? You know what you did? I summarized everything beautifully. <laughs> I summarized everything beautifully. <laughs> all of the other stuff is filler. It's all of the showmanship. It's mm -hmm. it's explaining. It's I don't know what else to say, but picking apart why this is wrong. Why is she saying that? Why is that important? I mean, you know, when she comes on stage in the very beginning, the focus is on her. The camera's on her. She's crying. She's on her feet. She has her shoes off, and she's like, "Oh!" And it's all about her. Mm -hmm. So really, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying. And to what that <clears throat> what that points to is the um, the role of a minister or a pastor. Number one, shouldn't be a female. That's what we believe That's is correct. in the Bible. But yeah. let's just set that issue aside. If you believe that the role of a minister is to primarily or even exclusively teach by example, in other words, your intellectual ability to understand and expound upon the Word of God is really not that important. What's yeah. more important is you you demonstrating this pietistic deeds, not creeds. Yeah, and so <laughs> this is this is like um, taking that idea to its logical, really bad conclusion, where you say, you know, I, her doctrine. I don't even know what it is. Doesn't but look matter. what she does. Look at what she does. Exactly. Look at look at the good deeds that she does right. with the poor and the people who are needy. And then look at how she has this really emotional, uh, intimate connection, connection directly. Yeah. And look, at, she's on her knees right there on the stage. Let's all watch her be humble. This is in my mind. And again, I don't know how how much of this is her putting on an act or how much it's totally sincere. It could be totally sincere, but it's the worst kind of humble brag. Yeah. Because we look like the bad guys. Anybody that criticizes, oh, well, you're just being mean. I, okay, I, I'm not intentionally just, you know, being mean for the sake of being mean. We're mm -hmm. trying to evaluate the teaching, mm -hmm. but you can't evaluate the teaching. And this is kind of what Todd White did. I don't think he's done it as well as she has, but he, he would be on his knees for, you know, 10 minutes. And he'd be talking about God, and he'd have his arms open, and he'd have his eyes closed. And <laughs> if you haven't established the role of a pastor and you think the role of a pastor is to demonstrate by you know your uh, good pietistic behavior and when i say pietistic i mean your 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 moral and your um you're demonstrating a intimate intimate relationship with god as opposed to demonstrating your knowledge of god's word well then god's word really becomes secondary and in an, an example like heidi baker it's really hard to critique her not because her doctrine is is bad because her doctrine is bad it's that there really isn't a lot of doctrine there with the exception of she does she does read um john 17. talks about the unity of christ and about love and how love is the most important thing and how she doesn't talk any she never says anything negative about a brother and sister in christ because that does not promote unity there's nothing good in that hmm. And so, so if you have that as a foundational thing, mm -hmm. you would ignore all the verses in the New Testament about beware of false teachers, you know, kind of be on guard for, for teachings that don't line up with the true doctrine. Right. Because although um, it's true that love is extremely important, She's, it's also loving to correct exactly. bad teaching. Exactly. Just like a loving to correct a child exactly. when they're doing something bad. We all need correction at That's times. That's right. So, yeah, two hours and 17 minutes. Let me see if I can find that. Okay. See if that'll be useful. Just right before 
Good old Kenny joins her. Is it stage. when she's on the floor here? Do you remember? Two hours, 17 minutes, and 37 seconds. Let's see if this lines up. And this person got up and started speaking about forgiveness and how we needed to forgive. And I said, I've done that. And I was face down on my pillow. I was in the perfect position, face down on my pillow. I'd been there for hours seeking him and worshiping him and adoring him and being totally present, 100% present with him. And he said, what about Al Shabaab? And I said, Lord, story. Lord, and I started going through the stuff they were doing. And our pastor, who's four and a half year old, was beheaded. And I started going through this stuff. And I started going through this stuff. The Lord said, what about Al-Shabaab? I said, Lord, I, I, I want to love them. He said, you only have authority where you have love. Hey! You only... <laughs> that hey? You're not thinking what I'm thinking. Hey! 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 Yeah. Hey. Hey. So now she's going between talking in her own voice and then speaking directly right. as, what's, as what's, God. What's difficult is she's talking about, you know, if we were to believe everything she says, mm -hmm. people being beheaded, children's being beheaded. Terrible, terrible things. And happening. there are terrible things. Mm -hmm. It's like, why would anyone want to stay there? And she claims it's all for her ministry. It's mm -hmm. all for Jesus. And it's like, how can you... <clears throat> Look at somebody who's given their life to this type of lifestyle to say they're not of God, they're not of Jesus. Yeah, and I think the really simple way to look at it is to say, uh, okay, on one one side, I would say, well, if that's how you evaluate whether or not somebody's teachings are true, then we need to look at the Mormons who have right. a lot of false doctrine, right. unbiblical doctrine, and say, well, they're just as good as anybody because they do good deeds. They raise lots of money. Feed people, take care of people. Uh, any any, any right. religion that somehow uses the name of Jesus. Uh, if they do good deeds, well, they're they're good enough. That's close enough. I mean, right. look, so you're you're evaluating the deeds, you're not evaluating the teaching. Mm -hmm. And so this is a really common mistake. And very it, very easy to get into that. Is it is it possible that somebody could have really good doctrine and be just mean nasty people who don't help anybody? No, it's not. It's mm -hmm. not possible because all doctrine is is the, the, the pure teaching out of God's Word. And so we are refined by that Word. We are changed by that Word. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit works through the Word to change us so that we're not selfish, nasty, mean people who just want to, you know, keep everything for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think it's really good to, to want good doctrine and to understand that good doctrine will lead to good deeds. It will lead to life change. But we never point to our life change as doctrine itself. We never point to our good deeds as proof that our doctrine is good. We point to the Bible to prove that our doctrine is good. Mm -hmm. I hope that adds some clarity because I, I think it is really confusing when people seem to be doing good things and then, you know, we come along and you know, we're kind of making fun of them or not really making fun of them as much as we're making fun of the behavior and these right. weird, really dark things that Kenneth Copeland says. Yeah. To be associated with Kenneth Copeland at this point, who has proven himself to be a false prophet, is so problematic. Right. I don't get it. Right. When I look at, you know, he went to Bill Johnson's church, right? Yeah, in the past year. I mean, why is anybody who... He wasn't previously a follower of this really uh, prosperity gospel sort yeah. of thing. Why are they now okay with it? Because Bill Johnson let him in the door and said, hey, this guy's good. Yeah. So I think uh, in that environment, you are, number one, taught from the very beginning that doctrine is bad. The mind is bad. Right. Even though everything you learn comes through the mind, they they pretend that's not the case. They pretend that everything's which coming. Is, which is nothing new. I right. mean, when we started in this whole Word, word of Faith movement... You're that's getting the, ideas from people. That's what the prophet said to you. He's like, you have it all here, but you need to have it here. There's something wrong. That's what's wrong with you. And that's where I, For you know. For years that he was told that. And I wanted to, I want to say, well, if that's true, why doesn't God just plant it in my heart? Right. Because right now you're using my brain to teach me how my brain is something I shouldn't be using. Right. This is just dumb. It's just really dumb. A lot of people, I can't even tell you, probably thousands are in that hole oh, yeah. and have been. So Right. And this this is a this is a foundational it's problem. Evil. Absolutely evil. Because it does it, it ruins people. If you haven't seen the article that I posted, <clears throat> I don't know, a couple months ago now, it's about the um, the thing with the bombs in it. You know, uh, these I originally called the article Diffusing Demonic Dirty Bombs. Um, there's this idea that I was trying to 
think of a, an analogy to an, a, a dirty bomb. It's right. a bomb that has a bunch of bombs inside. So it lands and it just shoots out all over and does all sorts of damage. And that's what we see in the church. There are foundational yeah. ideas that aren't biblical, but they sound okay if you don't really critically think about them. And one of them is this head versus heart thing. Right. Where you say, oh, you can't use your head. you got to just use your heart. Right. Well, you know what? That's just not true. The Bible doesn't say that anywhere. It right. does say that we're supposed to love God with our mind. Yes. As well as other things. It doesn't just say that. But um, that's that's an article that I'll put a link to that. I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I got too much stuff going on. Um, do you want to keep playing that? I kind of got lost where she was. I didn't. Hang Talking on. Talking about love. Oh, I know. this is actually a really common thing. Bob Jones said the same thing, the guy who was the, the supposed prophet. He said, God told him uh, something about the only thing that matters is how well did you love people? Well, no, the only thing that matters is did you trust in the atoning sacrifice of Christ on the cross? To forgive you of your sins. If you don't have Christ as the focus of all your faith, and you're talking about how much you love people and how much good you do to others, well, now your faith is based on your performance, your good deeds. This is a, a, a Christian faith. It's not based on the atoning sacrifice of Christ on the cross. So we will always go back to that. We will always bring people back to this very foundational idea that why should God accept you? Because of your deeds? Because of how much you love people? Nope. Because I might love people really mm. well one day and not so good another day, but it'll never be 100%. And it'll never right. be We're never going to be 100% as... present to God like she said she is. Right. I mean, that right there, it's like, I'm 100% whatever. I mean, we're never 100% anything. We still have a sin nature. That's right. So one of the things she said in the very beginning, um, she does a lot of repetition. Um in the very beginning, she talks about God is wooing you, wooing you, wooing you. He's wooing you. Go again. No, she's wooing them. Well, she's saying God is wooing yeah. you. Okay, but she's wooing them. And if, if But if this that whole was... repetition, I just want to... Yeah. Because she repeats and repeats and repetition, repetition, and kind of like over and over and over it's and over. It's a mantra. Legacy, 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 legacy. Legacy, legacy, legacy. Prophesy over them ten times. Start to prophesy over it ten times. What I've seen, let it be. Ten times what I've seen, let it be. Ten times what I've seen, let it be. Believe for it ten times. Ten times. Ten times. Ten times. And you say ten times, 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 ten times. It's a mantra, and a lot of a lot of churches do that. Our old church that we went to did that. You got the soft music playing these kind of a, so, a, a four-chord loop over and over again. Matthew 6. Um, Matthew, Matthew 6. I'm going to go to 7. Matthew 6, 6. I'll read a few verses. But you, when you pray, this is Jesus talking, go into your inner room. Don't tell people about your secret place. Mm -hmm. That <laughs> Todd talk, always, always talks about. about. I'm in my secret place. Okay, go into your inner room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees you in secret will repay you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as you as the Gentiles do, for they suppose they will be heard for all of their many words. Mm -hmm. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way, and guess what he does? The Lord's Prayer. That's which we're never taught. Right. In all these other churches, we've it's, never been taught that in all these other churches. But here's God Himself saying, "Don't do this, do this." And we go, "No, no, He didn't mean that." So we're going back to repetition. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness, what does this mean? So yeah, it's, you know, pray then, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive have forgiven those who are debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then we add, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Which is from the Old Testament. For if you forgive men for their transgressions, for if you forgive men for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions. That's pretty hefty. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of you have been sinned against by people who call themselves Christians and you still haven't forgiven them. We've gone through that. And you need to forgive them, even though they don't think they need forgiveness. But it's it's been, you've been sinned against. The notes here in this, um, <clears throat> this is the EHV study Bible, which came out just in the last few years. The Evangelical Heritage version is a new translation. It replaces the traditional the original NIV, which got kind of corrupted, I guess, in the most recent one. This is from our Wells Synod. But the notes for that verse say, Refusing to forgive reveals a lack of faith, and God's forgiveness is received only through faith. We do not earn forgiveness by forgiving, but it is possible to drive faith from our heart and to forfeit mm-hmm. God's forgiveness by, by refusing to forgive. See the parable of the unmerciful servant in Matthew 18. So the the law gospel thing would really help if you have been listening to people like Heidi Baker because you're she's she's talking about her own deeds and how uh you know she's somebody that you should emulate. And then Kenneth Copeland comes along and pretends he's God and says the same thing. Mhm. I um we're we're both going to be in that new um docu series and I did talk about this in some of the interviews about Heidi Baker's a really good example of this version of Christian living where there's higher levels and you got to get to the highest level by and i use the uh, example of when the army guy is going through the mud crawling under the barbed wire he's doing all this really tough stuff and he finally gets to the other side he's he's gotten to the next level it's, it's kind of the illustration i use for her because she talks about having to go through these really really difficult oh, things yeah and you feel like gosh I, I didn't do those things and i'm not getting the results that she's having woe is me yeah. So you're you're driven inward and feeling bad and feeling like, you know, I, I haven't done as much as she has done. But right. the truth is, we don't really know exactly what she's done. I mean, is she really that intimate with God? I don't know. We don't know. She's just on stage telling stories. So <clears throat> The other thing is, if you care to watch all these two hours, two and a half hours, you'll see her tell stories, read scripture, tell stories, and what God ta- talked to her about, a chicken with the head cut off that's like body of Christ, mm. you know, not getting along with each other, and now we're not intimate with Jesus, so our heads are cut off, and we're not being useful, and all this weird stuff, and then she'll stop, and then she'll go down, and then cry, and talk over people, and tell them how they're going to do this, or they're going to do that, and, you know, all these people are just so desperately mm-hmm. wanting her to preach over them. Right. So when you talk about being in, I mean, I was there, mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. You know, you're so broken, you're so hurt, or you... It's, it's a flesh thing, too. Mm-hmm. You want to be important. You know, I want God to know me. I want to do this. I want to be about that. I, I remember going to see that prophet. Yeah. One of the last time, if not the last time. And then another pastor and a worship pastor came because they wanted to visit the same prophet. And, of course, I was really close to those guys at that point. And I remember feeling like, I'm in. You know, this guy knows me, the prophet, and then this big pastor guy and this worship pastor guy, they all know me and they're all, you know, I'm I'm part of the in crowd. I mean, it was bizarre when I look back. Yeah. When I look back at some of my stuff too, it's like, Very I bizarre. can't believe that. And so when you're coming out of this and you're trying to figure out, you know, but I was really seeking God and this was my thing. Why didn't he mm-hmm. tell me that I was on the wrong path because I was really seeking him? I had to come to that realization that, was I really seeking him? I mean, am I that pure of a person that I just want God? Or is my flesh being fed? I think, you know, it's that's a really good point because I think what happens is there's some level of sincerity. Oh, yeah, definitely. Whatever level that is, who knows? Right, right. But combined with that is you're sincere, but you also have been taught a whole bunch of things wrong. Right. So you're doing a bunch of things that are supposed to get the results that you're looking for when, in fact... It's all a bunch of false teaching anyway, so right. it's not going to help you. 
And then on top of that, you've got this element of, I want stuff. I want to get somewhere. And then when you don't get all that, oh yeah, you're mad at God. Or you're mad. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you yeah, are. You're mad yeah. at God because all these other people are getting all of this. At least they say they are from stage. Well, and at that point, you're believing it. Mm-hmm. And you were, pro- you know, prophesied over years ago about X, Y, and Z, and that hasn't. So what's wrong with you? Are you the defective person then? God doesn't love you. Well, or is there even a God? And if you are listening to somebody like this in this specific situation where the stuff we just watched where, you know, God himself <clears throat> supposedly is telling Hattie Baker how great she is. Right. How she's practically a, a replacement for Jesus himself. Right, right. Y- you got to feel like, <laughs> wow, she's amazing and I'm I'm worthless. I'm never going to be that. I'm, I'm never going to be that. Well, you know what? That's true, but never, she isn't either. Right. It's all a facade. It it's totally all fake. Is. It's all delusion. And so that's why we, uh, I don't, Try to be super nice to people who are already super famous and super influential and are super wrong in their teaching. Yeah. Because I don't want to prop them up any more than they are already being propped up. Right. You know, sometimes people say, oh, why do you put those little bits in there? You're just mocking. You're just, you know, uh, number one, I, I, I throw funny stuff in because I want people to actually watch the video right. so they can actually learn something. And if there is a bit of mocking, it's because they deserve to be mocked. Because they're held up in such high esteem by people that I want to say... Hey, we're all worthy of getting knocked down about 37 notches. <laughs> yeah. All of us, myself included. Myself at the top of the list. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's actually healthy for people to look at Heidi Baker and say, I'm not buying this. I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I just don't want to buy th- I'm not buying into it. I'm going to step back a little bit and be a little bit skeptical and actually think about what she says instead of just going, well, look how... You know, she's crying a lot, and that shows that she really means what, what she says. Well, maybe, but that doesn't mean it's true. Right. It doesn't mean it's biblical. Right. It, it may mean that she's sincerely off her rocker. Right. And she's really got stuff going on that's really, uh, right. under on the surface, uh, it's really bad. Well, and another thing I think comes to my attention over and over again with all these different people that we watch and listen to, majority of the time, it's just... Trust me and my friends. Mm-hmm. Just trust me and what I said that I fed thousands of people or raised so many people from the dead. You don't need to know all the information. Just know that it happened. You know, I, I just, I mean, there, I could go to a lot of different examples of how that's proven to be wrong. How all these people say we do this and then when it comes to their own wife or their own child, mm-hmm. not raised from the dead, they're not healed. Mm-hmm. Does God heal today? Of course he does. But it's his will. It's when he chooses mm-hmm. to. We don't tell and declare him what we want and he needs to heal us because I have enough faith. Well, and as an example of that, she just put on Facebook about a week ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, yeah. that uh, not her, but her daughter posted on her Facebook page saying that she's had to have, um, I read it to you, was it yeah. something to do with her spine? Yeah. That she had, to, she had to have surgery, and she's recovering, and she's not going to be public for at least a couple of months. Right, because she had to have... This is the woman who talks about miracles happening, that she actually says she healed an entire hospital she full did. of children. Right. I mean, we don't know if that's true, but we do know that she herself had to go get surgery. Right. And they, it, it was also mentioned that it's because of all the bumpy roads that she had to drive down that her back got worse. Which is maybe true, but it also sounds a lot like, you know, feel sorry for me. Yeah. We all get old and we all are broken down because this side of heaven is sin and we have bodies that decay until we are dead and reunited with Christ. We don't have perfect bodies and we're expected, I mean, arthritis and back problems Mm -hmm. and neck problems. And unfortunately, that's a part of getting old. So. Also, I'd like to I'd like to ask the question publicly: Where is Gloria Copeland, Kenneth Copeland? Yeah, for years. Well, it's been at least a year. I have, we saw her from a year ago. I can't remember how long it's been, but it's been somewhere a year, maybe two. I don't want to overstate it. Okay. Because yeah, normally she's sure. there all the time, and she hasn't been public for a while, many months. I talked to Justin about this in the last six months, four months, something like that. So I haven't looked into it recently, but. And, I, and, you know, people say, oh, you're just being mean. Well, no, these are the people that say healing is guaranteed. So let's hold them to their own standards. Yes. We are holding them to their own standards. That's what I've been doing. not a problem with that. That's what I've been doing with Bill Johnson, be. especially. Right. Because he is the new Kenneth Copeland. Right. He has incredible influence. And he is 
taking people and he's pulling them away from any kind of biblical faith. And so he deserves to be scrutinized and to be criticized. And he makes very, very public videos. He's very public about his teaching. Right. So uh, just like these people, it's appropriate for Christians to publicly uh, uh, criticize is a, is a word that can sound like you're just criticizing for the sake of criticizing. But I mean to criticize their teaching so that you can evaluate it and see if it's true or not. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, people can do that if somebody wants to take one of our videos and mm -hmm. pick us apart. We, we we're putting ourselves out there. They could right. do that if they wanted to. Anyway, so I honestly, this is two hours. And you did all those notes. I mean, you know, we pretty much summed up a lot of things here. Okay. And and we could call this the shortest hit the bar ever. We could. <laughs> it's Memorial Day weekend, actually. We could. The other thing she says, if you want to really look into this, this is so weird. And one hour and thirty five minutes and thirty seven seconds. I was listening to this thinking. This is just really weird. Do you love me? Let me love you, he says. Let me love you, let me love you, let me love you. Let me love you to death and kiss you to life. Let me love you to death and kiss you to life. Let me love you to death and kiss you to life. Just reach out your hands to him from this low place. And if you prefer to be in your seat, just be in your seat, just lift your hands out. Just do something like a child crying out to Abba, I trust you, Abba. Let me love you to death and kiss you to life. That is so weird. I don't even, I mean, that, that's weird. This is, this is an example, a pretty extreme example of mysticism. Right? What you're this saying whole is, thing is, yeah, what this Christ, whole thing is for two hours. What Christ did on the that. cross is, yeah. is like, yeah, whatever. That happened a long but time ago. But now we got all this. Yeah, now we got to have, God's got to convince you that he loves you. Oh, so dying on the cross does, doesn't convince you? Right. You got a problem. Right. Both she has a problem that she thinks she needs to have this weird language about God loving and kissing you right. in order for you to be convinced of his love. And she's ignoring the, the, the true sign of God's love for us. And, and really, it's kind of like she's saying, you don't know how lovable you are. Okay, let's do this. I got, I got this queued up. This is from her. Good, because I'm... Mom, are you oh, yeah. I watched this whole thing, too. Um, the Nifinto, Heidi Baker documentary. That just came out a few months ago. N-I-F-E-N-T-O. There's a part here where she says what she thinks the gospel, gospel is. is. Right, and I don't have that written down here. She gave them a present of forgiveness that they didn't earn. And she gave that gift in the name of the one who saved her and saved her from carrying hatred and bitterness and anger that could never ever go from her. She released love. She released faith. She prayed for those who persecuted her. And it, it, for sure, what Marta did that day changed my life again. And I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Was it after this? Or it's right here. Okay. He sent Jesus to set us free from our sin. And maybe people would say, well, I don't need to be forgiven. But I think if we actually are honest with ourselves, we'll understand we need a Savior. We need a Savior. We need one who sets our hearts free. We need a Savior who takes away our orphan spirit. And we need to know the love of a Father. A Father God who says, you are mine. You are mine entirely and I never divorce my sons. I never divorce my daughters. I, I love all of my kids. I want every single man, woman and child to know my heart. That's the kind of Father who is our Daddy God. Okay, let's just evaluate this part. Okay. He sent Jesus to set us free from our sin. That's good. That's good. And it, it's absolutely true. There's nothing wrong with what she said. And this is actually very similar to the Michael Todd video we did. Yeah. He mentioned yes. something almost exactly like that. 
But then the definitions get really foggy right after that. Yeah. So let's go to the next sentence. And maybe people would say, well, I don't need to be forgiven. But I think if we... If somebody says, I don't need to be forgiven... That's a problem. That's a real problem. You don't see sin in your life. Right. And so uh, if, you've, if you've seen uh, Ray Comfort, he does yeah. a great job of making this point over and over again when he evangelizes with people. He tells them, have you violated any of the Ten Commandments? When people say, I'm not that bad, he says, oh, have you I ever, didn't kill anyone. Yeah, have you ever had lust in your heart over a woman? Right. And all the guys are like, uh, yeah, well, well... According to God's law, right. you, you are guilty before God. So... If you don't think you need forgiveness, you need the law. You need the law to convict you. That's one of the primary purposes of God's law. It's not just to instruct us. It's actually more important that uh, on top of being instructed, we realize, oh, wow, we're guilty before holy God. How desperately we need a Savior. Right. But what she's going to turn this into is you don't think you need forgiveness because you haven't released forgiveness yourself and felt this, uh, this sense of being free from... Uh, uh, unforgiveness, I think. Keep going. Orphan spirit. An orphan spirit. Actually, our honest with ourselves will understand we need a Savior. Okay. We need a Savior. We need one who sets our hearts free. Okay. From what? From what? That's the key. She does not say. And it's not even setting our hearts free. No. Although you could use that language if you wanted to, but what we really need to make clear if we're going to understand the gospel is that we are guilty before God of our sin. Right. We were born in sin. That's what the whole Adam and Eve garden right. thing this was whole... all about. <laughs> and so the whole point of the Bible leading up to Christ, and we're going to talk about this more in this, those videos I'm doing with Daryl, yeah. uh, specifically on understanding the Bible better, is that it's about, it's about redemption. It's about God sending a Redeemer to save us from hell. Right. Hello, to, there not, is a hell. Not to save us from an orphan spirit. Right. Although That's you, not the worst thing that could happen to right. us. The worst thing is, you know, it is it is true that we feel lost. We feel like we have no purpose. It, it's like we don't know what our place in the world is, and we're kind of going through life with a lot of confusion. If you have all those things, that's that's true. That's but if you don't get to the core problem, which is you are you are a sinner before a holy God, well, you're going to just kind of be putting band aids and feeling yeah. better about and and I think this is what Heidi Baker does wrong. This is like what we're doing with her. We're putting a band aid on her. It really so she's sore yeah, because so it's bleeding, but it needs to be cut out. So yeah, it's very good, temporary. Yeah. yeah. But so, she's getting surgery in June. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's <laughs> she's so acting cute. like completely fine. Yeah. So let's well, let's watch yeah. this again. We need a savior who takes away our orphan spirit. So what does that mean? He takes away our orphan spirit. I don't know. If she said he dies on the cross in our place, we deserve the punishment that Jesus took in our place. That would really explain a lot. But she doesn't do that. Maybe she does in other places. But she's really focusing on this. It's almost like everything is about you just not understanding who you are. Right. Which is what we've been doing over and over again. Right. And we need to know the love of a father. A Father God. Okay, so we need to know the love of God. And how would we know the love of God? It wouldn't be by him just saying, oh, you're great. You, you know, I want to kiss you. I want to love you. I want to say I love you over and over and over again until you finally get it into your thick skull. No, actually, the problem might be that you actually love yourself too much. And so having somebody repeat over and over again that God loves you is only going to make things worse. It's going to confuse you more because you're like, I thought I was acting kind of selfish. I thought I was actually too much in love with myself. I thought I was, you know, behaving <laughs> yeah. in a way that's inappropriate. And then somebody comes along and says, oh, no, you're great. Yeah. Oh, Just really? take that up a notch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what we're not saying is you got to always feel bad about yourself right. and, 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 you know, walk around with your head hanging down. But somehow in this whole movement, we have lost the idea of we are sinner needing a savior. And oh, by right. the way, what God demands of us we could never be so exactly. He, he totally died in our place. He he he. Re, what he required of us that we couldn't do, he did for us. Right. I mean, it's just it's as simple as that. Yeah. Who says, "You are mine. You are mine entirely, and I never divorce my sons. I never divorce my daughters. I I, I love don't know what that means." It, it's just it's just really nice language that makes people feel good. Like, oh, really? God loves me that much. It's true if they're a Christian. Yeah. If you've been redeemed by Christ, then... He'll then never it, leave us nor forsake right, us. Right. That's He'll absolutely true. But right. 
she's just not making that clear. And, no. you know, I've been doing a lot of stuff with uh, some of the American Gospel. The American Gospel. Yeah. And we've been just hitting this hard because that's what all of these people are saying. And if you really question them, they might say, well, no, I, I, I didn't mean to ignore repentance. I didn't mean to ignore the fact that we're guilty of our sin. But you did. You right. ignored it over and over again. And you just tell people how great they are. Or it's like, yeah, they heard it. They don't need that anymore. Right. They, now they need a better self-esteem. Yeah. And self-esteem is a really tricky issue. It is. And I know I've been there. I get yeah, it. Yeah. So, but, but, you know, when you start skipping over the gospel right. and say, well, you know, you just had the gospel one time. That's all you need. It's like, no, you need to be reminded of what God did for you. Not only because of how sobering that is of our desperate state of being on this earth and being in sin, but also to know how much... He want he wanted to do that. He didn't have to, but right. he wanted to because he did want us. He did want to draw us to himself. And that should focus us on Christ. Exactly. Not if, on Heidi Baker. Or not on ourselves. Like, or on Do you know how good you are? Do you know how amazing you are that God would do so much for you? It it should always focus our attention back on what Christ has done. Right. And then we don't focus on ourselves. Right. Because when we focus on ourselves, it can become really confusing. And a very spiraling effect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's eaten most of this, so we better not, because she might have bad poops. <laughs> she likes carrots. I know. She loves carrots and cucumbers and tomatoes. Okay, so we're we're gonna we're gonna conclude this. Yeah, we should. It's Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend. Thank we, you for joining us. We today. forgot to turn our timer on, so we don't even know how we long. We don't know. I think this might might be one of the shorter ones. Might be. Maybe we'll get more views. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. People are gonna say, "Finally, you yeah. shut up." We appreciate you guys very much. Thank you. For for yep. your prayers, your love, and, and encouragement. Uh, we appreciate um, so much uh, just, you know, emailing us or telling us what we've done. Or, I mean, how this has helped. Get those cards, the stickers. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned that, people. We really appreciate that. And, you know, it seems like if it's not one thing, it's another. And you guys can probably identify with that. You know, we had two dogs that died on us last year, and now we've got... Ginger that we're not sure. It doesn't sound pretty, sound that good. But you know what? We'll take one day at a time and enjoy her as much as God has given us to her because these are gifts from God. And uh, for people who don't like us talking about our dogs, well. Too bad. There you go. It's our, it's our show. Tiffany, thank you so much for your gift, thank your you, Tiffany. package. Yes. Um, she has this great little store, website, where she makes these really funny little, it's actually much better than the, no one's even complained that I closed it down. <laughs> we, had, we had our own shop, right? Because people were asking for like, I'm the I'm not pasta. a graphic artist. I'm a painter. I right. don't know how to do graphic art. Right. But like uh, gobbledygook, word salad champion. I, these are probably too small to see. Yeah. Them. I live with me, Todd White. I'm going to put a link and to cards. her store. You should show the cards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The cards the are bigger. The cards are bigger. There's Joel Osteen telling the truth. I don't know. <laughs> oh, look. There she is. Shaba. Shaba. Which is Shaba, what Heidi ba, Baker ba, says. Ba, ba. Shaba, Shaba. <laughs> no, man, I'm just pulling your leg. Todd White. <laughs> Todd White. Uh, living your best life now means your future is going to be hell. There you go. Yeah. So you're going to put a link down for her site. I just our... said that. Oh, I Pay wasn't attention. listening. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, she wasn't paying attention. Nope. That's okay. Hey, thanks, everybody. We we are so appreciative of, of your watching our goofy little channel yeah thank you so much and we so hope you much. found this helpful we appreciate it make sure that ch you check out the playlist make sure you check out the other channels like uh, Long for Truth yep. and Justin Peters and of course Chris Rillsborough's Fighting for the Faith channel there's yep. other recommended channels there's a bunch of them and the Messed Up Church website has a lot of resources blah 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 and there you go and we're done we love you guys talk to you soon hey what they didn't howl yeah that's because this is a shorter video okay no howling <laughs> See ya. I don't want to hear it to be honest. I don't either. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bad. See Bye. ya. It's lifting. One for Moo Moo. Hey! 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 Hey!